Good morning, folks. After this aesthetic shot of plasma filaments dancing on the northwestern polar crown of our star, we're going to hit weather, top science news, and more. But let's begin with the last 24 hours on the sun and find the coronal hole turning out. Its solar wind began arriving overnight, and that is a good thing. You see the ramp up in telemetry on the right side, and that was able to quickly inflict its maximum intensity, which drove little more than a short-lived, lowest-level geomagnetic storm. But it was all about the timing. Hurricane forecast models look a little different this morning, don't they? This is still hellacious for the islands offshore, but at least the mainland is forecast to be spared for now. And it's all because the storm didn't take that compression and energy. Solar wind impact occurred during daytime in the West Pacific, and the geomagnetic storm occurred over daytime in the central Eurasian continent. Had it hit 12 hours later, the storm would be slightly intensified, but majorly pushed westward just like Irma in 2017. Another intensification of the solar wind at the right time today could matter, but that is not currently expected. We'll review again tomorrow. We are on to the moon with a brand new look in radio. Considerable number of features either visible only in radio or the low frequency waves help illuminate and teach about items we already know. Green Bank Observatory on this one. Let's step up to infrared and enter the realm of hunting down exo-Earths. Scientists have determined the infrared spectrum return Earth would display as it transited the sun from a viewpoint of an alien civilization. But my question is whether we should be looking for early Earths, more volatile, such that by the time we got there, they might actually look like Earth does now. No such non-visible light analysis needed here. OSIRIS-REx preparing for asteroid Bennu, analyzing the four potential landing sites, the full video and article is linked below. Wanted to share a good editorial piece in Nature up next. Australia looking harder into the Chinese influence on campuses. From small-scale discourse to intellectual property theft and straight-up spying. It's a good article because this is ten times as rampant in the United States, especially the theft and the spying. And very few good articles exist on the topic in the West. Just read this one like it's happening everywhere. Up next, an interesting combination of observatories solves a mystery. With Gemini at the central point, they believe Kepler-13 system could have been a triple star system with a primary binary group and a brown dwarf star closely orbiting one of them. But turns out now, it's not a brown dwarf but a much smaller and more inactive version of Jupiter, whose atmosphere is puffed up in a big way by the twin star radiation, so it can appear much larger in many investigations. Alas, just two active stars and a Jupiter in that one. I want to return the shout out to Jimmy from Bright Insight. His recent video on the Sahara is epic. Now most observers should know that the Sahara goes green every few thousand years already, but the extent of the hidden civilizations there astounds me, and it astounded everyone else who watched his video, linked below. Last but not least, something that should make the cosmologists change their pants. This tiny work in the lab showing how ultraviolet irradiance causes conductivity in certain crystal materials is a bombshell. Even though the materials are insulators, and while pressure and temperature have no effect on their conductivity, unlike most other similar compounds, indeed, all we need is UV exposure in order to become strongly conductive here. Plenty of UV light in the cosmos, plenty of crystal and dusty structures in electric fields, a never-before-known source of electrical conductivity in our universe. How about that? Website members, you have a bunch of new deeper looks. The next-to-last one posted is pretty interesting, though. We're answering a couple of questions, including one that hits hard on that galactic center outburst topic that we've been discussing most of the month. We greatly appreciate your support. If you need to catch up, our three movies released this month are all linked for you below this video. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.